Okay, in this video we're going to be going through uh, skinning this character using the skin modifier in Max. Uh, there's nothing really specific about Cat in this video, so if you already know how to use skin, you could skip this. But hopefully I'll be able to show you a couple of tips and tricks for how to use skin. So, first thing I want to do is unfreeze my character using unfreeze all. And then I have the character selected and I add the skin modifier to it, like so. And then I want to add the bones that I want to have control this character into the skin modifier. And you do that over here in the modifier panel with bones add. And uh, this should bring up a dialogue. And then in the dialogue box, uh, you'll see there's cat rig hub 02. Um, I have uh, in that dialogue, should no, I should note that I have select children turned on um, so that when I click on the root object, it'll pick everybody above it. So or below it actually. Um, so you see that uh, I have all of the cat rig objects in there. And so if I was to uh, quickly check this rig and see kind of how it's doing and move it around, you'll see that the, the mesh is, you know, following it right now. Um, so the next thing I want to do is actually start waiting, um, skin waiting, the things that I know are going to be weird. So the first thing that I know is going to be off, um, just from experience of using this, is that it, um, it makes these envelopes, these pill size envelopes, the size of about the bone um, that it's that's representing. So, you know, this spine bone is, is you know, about the size of this pill. And, and so in general, it's done a pretty good job of, of doing a first pass at it, um, but I'd like to come through and actually uh, clean it up. So in this character or in any character that has a big um, bone, as far as just size of bone, um, it's gonna make a big ass envelope. And let me show you that. Here's the teapot one. Bam. So it's trying to approximate the size based off this mesh. So, you know, the program did what it was supposed to do. Good job program, but it's not what we want. So in this case, we'll just start the head and I'm just gonna take these envelopes and um, just make them tiny by grabbing these envelope handles on the outside. And I'm just in move mode, edit envelopes is selected. I can pick envelopes and move them around. Um, and then same thing with this one, this is the jawbone. And you can see these these colors are telling telling you how many how much uh, influence the bone has over that part of the mesh so or those vertices. So if it's red, it means it's 100% uh, going to follow that bone. And if it's uh, blue, then it's you know fading on off to probably around 10%. So if I get out of envelopes mode and I grab this jaw and I rotate it, you'll see that the uh, a bunch of stuff that's not supposed to happen happens. It's terrible unless you like that look. Um, so we're going to fix that. So we're going to envelopes, edit envelopes, pick that jawbone. Going to do the same thing just by smashing these outer envelopes down. When the outer envelope gets to the inner envelope, it pushes it along so you don't have to do it twice. And then I'm going to pick these handles and just kind of move them in there. It takes a little bit to kind of get used to what you should pick on um, to move things around. The skin envelope is, uh, if we just take a look at one of them real, real quick, We'll see it's got two dots. Those represent the uh, the envelope start and start and stop, and then outside of that we have the uh, the inner influence and then the outer influence. And so, kind of like the light has fall off, it's sort of the same way with this. Anything inside of this middle pill uh, is heavily weighted, and anything outside of it is less. So this is meant to kind of blend over to the next envelope. So, all right, let's get back to the head. So you can see there's a bunch of verts assigned, um, even though there's no envelope there. But that's not going to be a problem because what we're going to do is hand weight uh, this head. Um, it's pretty simple. So the first thing that I want to do is that I want to set uh, weights on vertices individually. So I need to be able to select vertices. So if you look over here in the command panel, there is a vertices right there. Um, that allows us to now, much like sub-object mode, now I can actually pick on vertices. Um, and then if I turn on select element, now I can one pick uh, select elements. So for this, uh, the way I'm going to do the head is it's only two bones. And I'm going to do that the top half of the, the kind of spherical part of his head um, is all weighted to the top bone and the bottom half is all weighted to the bottom bone. A little bit of blending back here and then the teeth uh, linked basically corresponding to, uh, to each bone. So uh, and because we're doing it all in skin, uh, when I say linked, I basically just mean, you know, fully weighted to that bone. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to region select. I don't know if this will be easier for you to see in wireframe or not, but I'm going to region select this area right here, and that's going to grab all the top teeth, none of the bottom teeth, and the whole head. And I can go into this mode to make sure that I don't accidentally have something misselected. This tooth didn't get selected, so I can just hold control and add it. So now it's selected. Um, and now uh, I go down into the panel, and with the head bone selected, 
now I can type in a value right here into the weight properties absolute effect. So when I type in a one, you'll see when I go into wireframe, all of the verts that I had selected turned red. That means they're fully weighted to that head bone. So now I'm gonna go down to the jaw bone and do the same thing again, except with, I'm gonna select everything again, except now I'm going for the bottom teeth and the whole head. Um, and then I'm gonna use element mode again, hold down alt and deselect the head. So now I only have the teeth selected and the jawbone is active. I'm gonna go ahead and type that into one. And now the last thing I need to do is get um, the bottom half of this head selected. And the problem that I have is that you can see that the head's partly in, uh, kind of intersecting with the body right there. So it'd be hard to do a selection, like any kind of region select. I'd be picking up parts of the body as well. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I just have element active, select element, pick the whole head. Now I've got the whole head selected turn off element, get kind of on a side here. If you want to, you can go in the orthographic view as well. Um, and then I just deselect the verts from the top. You gotta have element off because if, you, if I did that with it on, it would just deselect the whole head. So now I have just the bottom verts, even the ones that are kind of intersecting with the body down there. Um, and then I can just weight that to one. And just remember, it's like whatever bone you have selected here and whatever verts you have selected, that's that's what you're setting up the relationship for right here. So now the last thing that I need to do for the head is I need to blend um, these verts between this, this area right here in the back of his head. So if I pick this one, you can see it's all red. And if I pick this one, it's all red. And they're, they're just basically going to turn into this really bad crease as soon as I open the jaw. These are going to go up and into the head. So I want to blend it out. So it's really easy. I'm basically going to select these back verts. And then I'm going to open up the weight tools tool box thing. And uh, with those selected, I'm going to hit blend. And uh, you know, one, maybe two, and then go to the top bone with those verts still selected and do the same thing, blend. And now you'll see that it kind of, you know, fades off to blue. And then we go to this one, it fades off to yellow. So if I want to blend it some more, I can click it a bunch more times and kind of blend it out. Now, if you want to, you can get in there and hand weight those as well, but that's just kind of a, this is a trick, we, or, or not trick, but this is a, a cheap and easy way to, to blend those out. Um, okay, so the head's good enough for now. Um, if we we're gonna refine the skin, which I suggest you do, um, you would wanna go ahead and you know move this around and see kind of what the mesh is doing and see if you're happy with the results. Uh, we'll do that towards the end again. So going back in perspective, um, my teeth are all linked to the bottom there teeth are all, everything's linked to the head, so everything's all set right there. If I move this, the head's all fine. So that's my intended result. And so now uh, let's go and weight the rest of the body. So I'm gonna do this all with the envelopes. Um, and the general idea that I, I use with skinning is get it as close as I can with envelopes and then go in there and actually do um, per vertex weighting, kind of like I did with the back of the head there. Um, in this character, I'm not gonna waste all of our time waiting him to perfection, um, but that would be the general idea. So I'm gonna uh, pull these envelopes down so they're not affecting so much around them. And uh, you'll notice that right here, there were some verts on, it, on this, his stomach that aren't getting picked because this envelope is shaped as pill, pill shaped and his stomach is a little bit more of a sphere. So we can add a cross section. That's over here, turn on add cross section. And now you click on, on, the, on our yellow envelope on, line, click on it once. And then I right click to get out of that mode. And now I have another cross section right there. So I can grab this and pull it out. And that gets us a little bit more close to where we want to go. And then for this next envelope, for all these sp the spines, I'm just going to kind of bring this down a bit. Same thing with the, uh, with the stomach, bring that out a little bit. And then now I'm not so worried about that anymore because as we got to the chest, it's not such a spherical object. I'm going to bring these in a bit. And now since I'm, uh, yeah, that's about it. Let's check this bottom pelvis and this guy, he's a little big still. And it, you know, it's up to you which, uh, bones you want to have affect the skin, how much, you know, to the, to the degree that you want it to happen. Cause in this case I have the spine bone and the pelvis bone are pretty close. So, um, you know, may, may work out that I should only use one of those. It might be better, but. We're not worried about that. And then here's our leg bones, and then our ankle. That looks okay for now. Some of the stuff, I, if it looks okay enough, I just won't mess around with it until I put a little bit of animation on it and see the uh, see it moving around and kind of really get an idea of what's going on. So now I'm doing the same thing down the arm. 
I don't want to pick any verts, and I'm kind of accidentally doing that, so I just turn off vertices over here. And clavicle, I kind of shape clavicle shape like that. And then we're getting into our twist bones. So those are those. And then here's our forearm bone. And we're going to open this one up like so. Same with this. And you can see how much of an effect the inner radius and the outer radius have. This is meant to blend, and this is meant to own. So there's that. I'm going to now, uh, that might be a little long actually, because there's a hand. So now when I want to move this uh, envelope back, I want to move it locally so that it, it stays along the axis that it's supposed to, so it more evenly matches the bone. You can also move it off axis, it's not, not essential. But in this case, I'd like it to keep that way. And then this one, I like this big blend that I'm getting right there for the fingers. So it's a little bit too big, but um, that's what I'm doing there. And then the fingers look okay. They're a little mushy, but for right now, that's fine. I'm mainly looking for stuff like this, where it's one envelope's fingers are taking over another fingers. That never looks good. All right, good enough for now. All right, so now that we have that uh, this side set up, we want to do the same thing to this side. And uh, there's a mirror mode that allows us to do that pretty easily. Go to mirror mode. And then now, um, you know, again, keeping everything symmetrical, it makes this work out well. Um, this will get botched up if your character is not symmetrical or if the bones are, you know, not symmetrical. This does kind of rely on everything being um, symmetrical along this plane. You can adjust the plane so that um, if it needs to move left or right, you can do that with your offset. And then you can mess with the threshold that says how far, you know, in the mirrored, mirrored world over here, how far off can this be before it's, you know, considered, um, you know, the mirrored relative of this bone. So um, if you do it right and you keep everything nice and clean, you can see that um, you have blue, ones on, blue bones on one side and green on the other side. And whenever you click on a bone, the corresponding mirrored bone uh, highlights. So when, you're, when you see that and you're all good to go, um, then what you do is you just say, you know, all right, well, these are the blue ones and I want to paste them to green. So I want to paste the blue bones to green bones. So up here we got paste green blue bones to blue bones. Nope. Paste blue bones to green bones. And then you see when I hit this, and everything gets selected and then all of those values got transferred over. So when I get into mirrored mode, you see how this one's all shaped like that, like a megaphone, and then this one's sort of got the same thing going on because it got mirrored. So at this point, our character is skinned. And uh, the next tutorial, we'll be talking more about um, what I'm about to do right here, which is adding a uh, cat motion layer. And I'm just going to put it on here really quickly so that we can see our skinned character motion in motion. And then I will explain uh, cat motion what I'm just uh, rambling through here very quickly in the next tutorial. Um, but I do know that um, his stride length is not 160. We'll get to that next. We'll see now. Now he's not so stretched apart. OK, so here we go. Press play. Here's our default cat motion. He's got a lot of attitude. Um, I don't know what kind of attitude. It's that attitude. There you go. Legs are a little weird. That's a combination of my leg positions and, uh, and some skinning. I can address that. Uh, and there you go. So there's our quick skinned guy. And in our next uh, tutorial, I'm going to be going through cat motion.